Question seven, the tip of the pendulum of a grandfather clock swings initially through an arc length of 45 centimeters. On each successive swing, the length of the arc is 90% of the previous length. A part one, complete the table below by filling in the missing lengths. So on the first swing, it's going 45 centimeters and that's what they've given us. The second swing is 90% of the first swing. And they've told us basically in the diagram how to find that. It's 45 multiplied by 0 0.9. So that's all I'm going to do here to fill in the second box. I'm going to go on my calculator, 45 times 0 0.9 and that's giving me 81 over 2. Now you can fill these in in decimal or uh, fraction, whatever comes up in your calculator. So that's my first one. In order to get swing 3, I'm basically multiplying 81 over 2 by 0 0.9 and I'm getting the 729 over 20 and so on. I'm multiplying each successive answer by 0 0.9. So my fourth swing is 6561 over 200. And my final swing on my calculator, it's coming up as a decimal 29.5245. And that's A part one. Nothing too stressful there, I don't think. Uh, a part two, they've given us a formula for the pattern. Tn is equal to 45 times 0 0.9 to the power of n minus one. Is the arc length of the nth swing. Find the arc length of swing 25, correct one decimal point. Basically, all here you're doing is you're finding term 25. That's all you're doing. So for n, we're subbing in 25. So term 25 is equal to 45 times 0 0.9 to the power of 25 minus 1. So we're basically putting it to the power of 24 here. So that's giving me term 25 is equal to 3.58949 which the question wants to one decimal point. So term 25 is equal to 3.6 centimeters. Don't forget your units because you might lose that mark uh, in, the, in the marking scheme. On the next page is part three to that question. And it's asking us to find the total distance traveled by the tip of the pendulum when it has completed swing 40. Give your answer in centimeters to the nearest whole number. So. What I'm looking for here is basically the sum of all the terms and I'm going to my log tables for my formula here now. So in my logs, I'm on page 22 and we're looking here at a geometric sequence or series because it's uh, reducing by 0.9 each time. So it's not an addition. That's why we're going for the geometric. So I'm looking at the sum of the terms here. So the formula I'm taking here is SN is equal to a times one minus r to the power of n divided by one minus r. And I'm just gonna write down the information I know. A stands for the first term, which is 45 centimeters, and r stands for the ratio, and it's changing by 0.9 each time. So they're the two pieces of information that I need for my formula. It wants swing of 40, the sum of the 40, so I'm subbing in s of 40, n is going to be 40 in this case and a is 45 as we said 1 minus r which is 0 0.9 to the power of 40. Close my brackets just be careful filling the power the power there is to the r and it's divided by 1 minus r 1 minus 0 0.9 so the sum of the first 40 swings is equal to uh, 443.9 three four nine the question wants it to the nearest whole number so again just always double check what the question wants so that's giving me 443 centimeters and that's part three scrolling on down now to part uh, iv uh, it is telling us that swing p is the first swing which is an arc length of less than two centimeters so every time i multiply by that 0 0.9 0 0.9 0 0.9 which swing will give me a length of an arc of just less than two centimeters. So I'm just gonna write that mathematically. My formula for term n is 45 times 0 0.9 to the power of n minus one. And I'm looking for it to be less than two centimeters. So it's not equal to two, it's less than two. All I'm gonna do now is solve for n. So a little bit of uh, algebra here now. So I'm gonna divide across by the 45. Again, don't get stressed when you see a less than symbol. Just treat it like it's an equals. So it's 2 over 45. So uh, I'm going to keep it as a fraction. That's the same as 0 0.4 reoccurring if you want. 
I'm then going to go to my log tables and I'm going to use my knowledge of logs here on page 21. And on page 21, top right hand corner, it is a to the power of x is equal to y, which implies, or the same as, the log of uh, y to the base a is equal to x. So that's page 21 on my log tables. And that's what I'm going to use here. So when I fill that in, I have log of y. My y is my 2 over 45 to the base of a, and my a is 0 0.9. And that is less than or equal to my power, which is n minus 1. I'm just going to type in log of uh, 2 over 45 to the base 0.9, and that gets me 29.55 is less than n minus 1. And I'm just going to do a little bit of solving here now for uh, n. Uh, sorry, now the screen is just moving there, just to make a bit of space. So I'm going to add 1 to each side or move over that negative 1. So that's giving me 29.55 plus 1 is less than n. So n is less than uh, 30.55. Now it has to be a whole number here, obviously, for the number of swing. So the swing with a with a with an arc length of less than 2 will have to be uh, 31. And the question is called swing p. So in other words, my n I'm now going to change to, therefore, p is equal to 31. Now, if you want to verify that, sub 31 back into the, the nth term, the 45 times 0 0.9 n minus 1, and you should see that it is less than 2. So you can verify that answer if you want. Okay, that is now the solution to IV. Uh, we're scrolling down now to part B. So B part 1, if the length of the pendulum is 1 meter, show that the angle theta of swing 1 of the pendulum is 26 degrees, correct to the nearest degree. Now I'm just going to draw out this pendulum, so my pendulum starts say from the left, swings then to the right, and it's going in this motion like this of the arc, so it's going like this, and it's telling us that the length of the pendulum, so this is the top of the pendulum, and it's coming down to here, so that has a length of 1 um, meter, and it's the same here one meter and it wants us to show that it has an angle here theta of 26 degrees now we know that the length of the curve from the pendulum from from the extreme left to the extreme right is 45 centimeters so we know that that is the case so what we're looking at here basically is we're looking at a sector and they're basically uh, getting us to use our knowledge of the length of the arc of the sector from page 9 in our log tables and the length of the arc in our log tables is given by the formula 2 pi r times theta over 360. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to work with the 26 degrees I'm going to prove that it is 26 degrees. I'm going to find the answer to be 26 degrees. So filling in my L, my L is my length of the arc which is 45 centimeters uh, that is equal to um, 2 pi multiplied by my radius, which is 1 meter. So my 45 centimeters here, I'm actually going to turn it into meters, which is 0 0.45 meters. So I'm going to put a 0 point in front of my L here. So it's I'm working either in meters or in centimeters, but you can't mix it. So I'm going to work in meters here. And it's 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 1 multiplied by theta over 360. And that gives me 0 0.45 is equal to 2 by pi by 1 is 2 pi times theta over 360. Again, a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to divide across by 2 pi. And that has given me 0 0.45 over 2 pi. So I'm dividing both sides by 2 pi there, basically. And that has given me... Uh, a fraction equals to a fraction. Different ways you can do this here. In order to simplify my fraction equals to fraction, I'm going to cross multiply. So that's giving me 0 0.45 times 360 is equal to theta times 2 pi. And that then, in order to get theta on its own, I'm going to again divide both sides by 2 pi, which is giving me 0 0.45 times 360 over 2 pi. And when I type that on my calculator, I get 
uh, degrees and the question wants it correct to the nearest degree so therefore theta is equal to 26 degrees and that's what the question wanted us to prove different ways you could have done that question uh, that's just the flow of the algebra that I did it but you can do it slightly different uh, looking now at part two hence find the total accumulated angle that the pendulum swings through ie the total sum of all the angles if the swings through until it stops swinging give your answer correct to the nearest degree so we're back to patterns here think about it here so you're looking for uh, all of the swings so there's infinite amount of swings basically until it stops that's the way I'm going to look at it so I'm going to page 22 in my log tables and I'm using my sum to infinity formula here which is s infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r and again writing down the pieces of information I know my a is 26 that's my first degree so we're talking in degrees here now because we're using part one b part one here so the first angle on the first swing is 26 degrees my or is my common ratio again and it decreases by 0.9 each time 90 percent and when i fill that in then to my formula i get s to infinity is equal to a which is 26 over 1 minus 0 0.9 which is giving me 260 degrees and that's the answer there to part uh, two Let's have a look now at part B, part three. And this is the last part of this question. Uh, hence or otherwise, find the total distance traveled by the tip of the pendulum when it has moved through half of the total accumulated angles. Give your answer in centimeters correct to the nearest integer. Okay, so the first part of this question is telling us um, when the tip of the pendulum has moved through half its accumulated uh, angle so we're looking at this part first now the total angle as we found from part 2 was 260 degrees so basically what we're looking at here is our accumulated total to be half of that which is 130 degrees so that's the first thing we need to do now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go back to the sum of all my angles formula sn is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r so I'm coming back to this formula here and what I want to do basically is find the value of n, the amount of uh, swings it takes to get to that accumulated total of 130 degrees. So what I'm going to do here again is I'm going to sub in my a, my r and my n. So my a is going to be my first angle, which was 26. Um, my r then is going to be uh, 0 0.9. That's consistent throughout this whole question. So I'm subbing in now Sn, which is the total degrees, which is 130 degrees, equals A, which is 26, times 1 minus R, which is 0 0.9, to the power of N. That N is what I'm trying to solve for here now, all over 1 minus 0 0.9. So that's giving me uh, 26 times 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power of N, all over uh, 0 0.1, is equal to 130. I'm just putting that 130 to the rear. It's just the way I do the questions. I'm putting that over 1, making a fraction equals to a fraction, solving two fractions, cross multiply. So that's giving me 26 times 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power of n times 1, which remains as 26 bracket 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power of n, is equal to 130 times 0 0.1, which is 13. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide across by 26 to isolate that uh, power of n as much as I can. So that's equal to 13 over 26, which is a half. So that's 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power of n is equal to half or 0 0.5. I now want to uh, find the degree of n. Now, I don't need those brackets anymore. So that's the same as 1 minus 0 0.5. 9 to the power of n is equal to 0 0.5 because I've isolated, I've gotten rid of that 26. I'm now going to move over that 1 or subtract 1 from both sides. So that's giving me 0 0.9 n is equal to 0 0.5 subtract 1. So that's minus 0 0.9 to the power of n is equal to 0 0.5 negative. Um, you can multiply across by negative 1 there or just change the signs. Because I have that equals, I can multiply across by negative 1. 
just to isolate, to get rid of that minus sign. We don't like working with minuses. Well, I don't. 0 0.9 to the power of n is equal to 0 0.5. Uh, I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to just bring it up here. So let me rewrite that. 0 0.9 to the power of n is equal to 0 0.5. Again, I'm going back now to my log tables on page 21. Uh, we've used it in the previous part here. The log, which has a to the power of x is equal to y, implies that uh, the log of y to the base a is equal to x. So I'm using this uh, rule again, and when I fill that in, I get log of 0 0.5 to the base 0 0.9 is equal to my power, which is n. And when I type in that log, I get 6 point, uh, five, seven, so 6 point five seven, so 6.5788 uh, eight is equal to n. Okay, so we're not done yet. That is just telling us the term which will give us a sum of half the total angles of 130 degrees. What we now need to do is, if we come back up to the question, the question wants us to find the total distance traveled by the tip of the pendulum to get to that 136 degrees. So I'm now basically doing all this again. So I'm coming back and I'm taking my SN formula once again. So the total distance this time, a, my, a times, 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. Now things are slightly different here. Because we're talking about the total distance of the pendulum traveled, my a is now back to the 45 centimeters and my r is still the 0 0.9. So the first part of this question, just don't confuse it, this was talking about um, angles but now we're talking about distance traveled. So subbing in my formula, um, Sn is equal to a which is 45 times 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power of n which we have from up above 6.579 I'm going to call it here I'm just going to go to three decimal points and that is all over 1 minus 0 0.9 and when I type that into my calculator I get S n, well s of 6.579 is what we're finding here, and I get 225.0044. The question wants it to the nearest integer, so that is giving me 225 centimeters in total. And that is the final part to question 7.